Guys, this is really scary. There's so many issues with where I live. Right now, as I'm leaving the house this afternoon to run errands, there is a chopper, a helicopter, police helicopter, hovering over, literally, right in my neighborhood. Like, literally. And this is not the first time this has happened either, but I've never seen this before, where the chopper is hovering or staying um, idling in the same spot like it's it's staying still in one place directly overhead right by this big ass hotel and it's literally less than a block from where I live literally it's right right where I live and that's very disturbing oh god I hate it here I'm sorry if this is gonna be like a complaining video but sometimes you just have to go there there are so many issues with where I live. The other day, somebody, I don't know, those fucking kids, I don't know, I sound like an old person, but somebody, I didn't see it happen, but I saw somebody had placed a rock right in the driveway where the gate is directly in front of my parking spot. I mean, maybe the rock fell and rolled over there on the ground, but it looked a little too it looks suspicious you know what I mean it looked like literally right where my parking spot is oh look at the airplane <laughs> it was right there and I'm like whatever but it looks as if one of those teenagers one of those uh, you know juveniles that hang out in the alley where I live it looked like they they placed a big-ass rock boulder right there like to fuck with me now maybe it was honestly there at ra by random coincidence but it looked too weird it looked like somebody had literally placed a big sharp rock in front of my parking space in the, in the driveway in the alley in, in front of my not anybody else's in front of my particular parking spot and I'm like there's no way are they trying to fuck with me I'm like oh yeah real cute real cute guys that's real funny yeah it's gonna be real fucking cute when i roll over the and i pop my tire and you know who's gonna pay for this if i bust my tire tires are expensive it's a good thing you know what i'm glad i noticed it okay let's bring it down because the energy is way up here i'm just saying you guys like it's a good thing that i noticed this and i i stopped got out the car car in park I got out moved the rock and then I was able to pull into my um, gate into my parking space but that was stressful that happened like what last night it's always something it's always something this morning slash afternoon I what do I wake up to but car alarms I mean to the, like an excessive amount like so many car alarms then there's all this construction going on and I get it but they're building a massive uh, skyscraper hotel in my neighborhood. So there's all this loud ass construction going on all the time. Um, the barking dogs, the car alarms, the sirens, and the emergency vehicles all going off in unison. That was really, and it's so loud. Um, so those are some of the issues. Um, I'm so, I'm getting so behind on rent. Um, I was visited by the managers of my building, um, not once, but twice in the same week. And that really, really scared me. It's a whole thing. Like I was told by someone, by like my friend or whatever, that if I fill out this letter I was told basically that if I fill out this letter um, 
that I will be like safe from eviction but clearly that's not the case because um, apparently my building doesn't accept these letters anymore or they're they're saying um, I grabbed a note on my door today that as well as he told me verbally when he came to my apartment the other day that the eviction moratorium is coming to an end and people will be tenants will be liable to be evicted um, they're at risk of eviction come February um, and it just is like you can't catch a break so I've been trying to send payments but it's scary when you get so behind on rent and bills so not only do I have the stress of that, but I have to worry about, I don't want to be homeless. I only made $200 at work tonight, but you know what? It's better than nothing. I'll take what I can get and be grateful. But it was pretty draining. All that that I had to deal with, all that I had to go through and, and do. And the, I felt like I was working. You know when you feel like you're working so hard at the club? You know, sometimes it comes easy, but sometimes it, it's a lot of effort you're putting out I mean you're really working it I mean this time I had to really work and I felt like I felt exhausted by the end of it but um what was I gonna say oh so if you totaled up let me get the calculator out let me get the calculator out okay if you totaled up what I made in in dance sales last night here, like I have my calculator right here. Let's um, do a quick calculation. Okay, you guys, listen to this. I sold a 20 minute room, that's 200. Then I sold another, uh, and then to a, a different client, I sold a 10 minute and then he wanted to go for more time because I was really working it. So then he did wanted to go for another 20 minutes. So a 10 plus 20. So we're at 200 with one client plus 200 plus 120 that's a 10 minute room and a 20 minute room what am i saying okay here's the calculation okay 200 for one client 20 minutes plus my other client 120 for 10 minutes plus 200 for another 20 minutes so he did a total of 30 minutes in there with me Okay, that's 520. Do you see that? Do you see that? Do you see that? So I, I made my quota. Quota is 180 at my club. So instead of tip out, okay, the good news and the bad news, okay? The good news is you don't have to tip out every night you work. Meaning if you come in and you don't meet quota or you don't make any, or you don't make money or you don't uh, make sa enough sales, they're not going to charge you that's good like if you don't have it no one's gonna charge you you don't have to pay to work I mean you do but you don't let me explain that really quick so if you show up and you don't make enough money you're good you're not in trouble or anything you're not gonna get a penalty <laughs> penile code yeah you're not gonna get penalized <laughs> but how it works at this particular club is um so that's the good news. Some clubs you have to pay tip out to a house mom or a manager. Here, you don't have to come, meaning I don't have to come out of my pocket and pay you, right? Because that could get stressful if you don't have it. If you don't have, literally you don't have enough money in the bank account, like for example, to cover it. So you don't have to come out of your pocket and pay the club, okay? But how they do tip outs is, is a system called quota. So you kind of do have to pay to work, but indirectly, but you pay in the form of your labor, if that makes sense. So the quota is 180 at my club. So meaning you, your minimum goal should be to sell at least $180 worth of lap dances. Then after that, then after that, after you hit that minimum amount, then you start making only 50% of whatever dances you sell, then they take another 20% out for taxes withheld. So let's do some math. So I sold 520, that was my total net, what do you call it, total gross or total net? I don't know, but that was my total. Let's subtract the quota to see what the remainder. So 520 minus the quota is 180. Five, see if you can follow along. 520 minus 180 
equals <laughs> hold on okay equals 340 okay remember after quota you only get half of that so let's do 340 divided by 2 for half okay 170 I only get 170 but wait there's more but wait there's more then they take out mind you don't forget don't forget that they take out another 20% for taxes here we go 170 let's do 20% of 170 so 0 0.2 times 170 equals 34 so now we have to subtract 170 minus the 34 that's 20% for taxes you're left with hold on does that seem right 136 hold on hold on let me just figure this out divide it by 2 20% of 170 equals 34 170 minus 34 okay guys we have a problem we have a we have a problem because according to my calculations my total take home rate was supposed to be 136 after quota and all the other fees and, and taxes and fees whatever are subtracted 136 last night he gave me 108 when I cashed out so for some reason I feel that the club owes me $28 I feel like there is a difference there I might have to bring this up to my manager if I go back into work tonight which I'll probably go back tonight whatever regardless if it's 108 or 136 that's not a big deal you know whatever but either way that's not a lot of money so 136 or 108 is what I made I don't know that's still uh, in question but and the total considering the total dances I sold was five hundred and twenty dollars worth of dances so the club is taking such a high percent you know I mean I'm just trying to do some math here yeah 104 yeah so the club is taking about so I'm only making about 20% of what I actually sold as far as VIP rooms and dances. That means, what's 108 times five? Yeah, that means the, the, I'm getting about one fifth, one fifth of the total amount sold. So the club is getting like five times the amount of take home pay that I actually cash that I take home but the good news is you get to keep all of your tips tips customers hand to you after a dance let's say for example um, or tips you make on stage sometimes people will even slide some money in your bra and your thong or something put put literally place money on you if you're walking around the room and you look good people will put money on your body so the good news is you keep your tips and the good news is they don't have tip out so-called quote-unquote tip out at my club but their tip out system is a system that they created called quota and so the quota really the simplest way I could put it is um, the payout system sucks for dancers it's really hard to come home with any money I mean I heard a girl complaining she sold $800 in dances. She sold $1,000 in VIP rooms. And I think she took home less than $200. So I'm not, I'm not the only one. I've heard my coworkers and other dancers complain about this. And so I'm not the only one being affected by it. But it's definitely hard out here. And keep in mind, I'm not doing extras. I'm not uh, hooking up with clients, meeting up with clients, having sex with the clients. I'm not doing anything sexual in or out of the club. Uh, with the clients so whatever I made 200 in dances and tips total um, take home pay whatever I actually made 240 but $40 of that I had to tip out to like five people including the DJ waitress doorman security bartender whatever so you know and that's like tipping them the bare minimum 
I tipped 20 to the DJ and I tipped everyone else five. So guys, that's just some of the math. Um, at this club, basically like, I don't know, like, so those are kind of some of the numbers you're, you're realistically that you're, you're dealing with. Like if you sell $500 in rooms, you're only coming home with a hundred of that. If you sell $800 in rooms, you're only seeing 200 of that. The other 600, five or 600 goes to the club, you know? So that's a hard pill to swallow because you'd be racking up VIPs after you're working up a sweat. You're putting in the work, you're talking your mouthpiece, you're literally physically dancing and you'll be looking at that chart like, Oh, I did one, two, three, four, five VIPs. That equals a thousand. You're feeling pretty good about yourself. By the end of the night, when it's time to cash out at the end of the night, you're coming home with less than $200 and you're like, what happened? I've been busting my ass for hours. What are you talking about? So guys, I want you guys to be aware of that so that you ha don't have unrealistic expectations. Like just because you see a thousand on the board, um, you know, don't think you're going to be coming home with a thousand of that majority of that goes to the club, unfortunately. And you have to c take into account the money you're going to have to put aside or come out of your pocket for tip out at the end of the night. And it is a good to habit to tip out your staff. Like if she gets you a drink, really, if she buys me a drink, I, th I believe this is my opinion. I believe the man, like the guy should tip her. I think the guy should come out of his pocket and tip the waitress. If he's buying uh, our table drinks, that's like to be a gentleman, you know what I'm saying? That's a gentleman's club. That's how it works. But I mean, the waitress, if she comes around like a sweeper, like she comes around and helps pick up like slide me a couple dollars and she helps sweep or scoop my money on the stage floor or she helps me get a basket and put some of my money in the basket to move things along quicker so that they can get me off stage and get the next girl on the stage rotation you know you want to kick her a few dollars for that or if they put you on to a good customer or they go out of their way to help you just if they're doing their job and you see them trying and you see them going out of their way and trying you know if the DJ if he or she hypes you up on stage or whatever adds you know some songs to your playlist you know you want to kick them a few dollars for that like basically if someone helps you or you feel like they they deserve it because they're like doing their job and you know they're doing a good job hustling and they're they're doing a good job at their job you know they should be compensated for that but it just sucks that even if you don't like the DJ or the VIP host even if you don't like their style of DJing or you feel they skipped you on stage or in my case, like last night, for example, I felt like I was at the club for over an hour before I went on stage and I felt like hours would go by and I still hadn't gone on stage um, for the night. Stuff like that is annoying, but you still have, you're still like expected to tip these people out at the end of the night and that can be annoying. But I guess it's the right thing to do because, you know, they're doing their job and we need them to function. Like we need a DJ, doorman, waitress, security, uh, you know, bouncers and bartenders like to have a functional club. So I understand that they're a crucial part of the operations of a club, but it's kind of annoying when I'm busting my ass. I have to look good. I have to sell myself. I have to walk around and talk to these people. I have to dance on stage. I have to dance in the back. I have to convince the customers to tip me and, and to go back there with me. I have to do all this and they're doing their job in flats, by the way, the girls are doing it in heels, by the way. And I have to do all that physical and mental and emotional uh, labor and then I have to tip out my, my, my coworkers and staff like that sucks you know that's super annoying but it is what it is you know and even when I can't tip out a lot I do tip them something because it's the thought that counts and you're showing them like look man I'm trying like I don't have a lot of money right now I didn't make a lot of money tonight but I'm gonna tip you what I can and they'll usually at my club, they're pretty nice about that. You know what I'm saying? Like they will appreciate that. I would say tip them a few dollars or tip them something, tip them whatever you can, five, 10, 20, tip them something. Even if it seems like a small amount, I think they would appreciate that instead of you forgetting them, like conveniently forgetting to tip them or trying to bounce out without tipping them. I would rather tip a little something than nothing at all because it's like a respect, it's a sign of respect, you know, like here, like I am trying to, to make tip out. Maybe I wasn't able to tip out a lot on this particular night or this week and they'll understand that, but I'm showing you, I am still trying to make the bare minimum tip out. Um, I think it's important to tip them what you can versus not tipping at all.
Because if you're the that one, if you're that person, if you're that dancer chick who has a reputation of never tipping uh, the DJ, you never tip the waitress or the doorman who walks you to your car. Sometimes the doorman will even offer to carry your bags for you, and they're just kind of looking out for your safety. They see to they, they see that you get to your car safely, and that is important. So you should tip them. If you now, if you didn't make any money or you made very little money and you didn't even make quota, uh, you they'll understand that, and you know you might not have to tip them. But usually, I try to tip people something, and it's kind of like relative to what I made. If I made more, I'll tip more. And yeah, tip out sucks. It's super annoying. Oh my God, I hate seeing motorcycles on the road. Like they make me so nervous. Now it's one thing if they're really skilled drivers and they can handle it, then maybe, okay, I get it. But you know, when they're all swerving, making erratic lane changes, all weaving in and out of traffic, especially, especially on the freeway, Oh, it makes me so uncomfortable, like, but hey, live to ride, ride to live, ride to live, live to ride, you know, I get it, but, you know, like, free bird, whatever, I get it, you know, but like, oh my god, so I just went to the ATM to make a quick drop deposit, that's slang for deposit, by the way. Um, what was I going to say? Let's see the total amount deposited. Well, I had to do it in two deposits because the first ATM... Uh, it let me feed only so much cash into the machine before it stopped and then an error message came up. The little cash slot like shut and then an error message popped up on the screen that said, uh, we are unable to process your transaction at this time because freaking, what is it? Uh, there's a machine error at this time. So the good news is I think it's still read the money I inserted but it just stopped after a certain point and I wasn't able to you know insert the rest like I wasn't able to deposit the rest of my cash so then I had to step out of the like closed the enclosed ATM and I had to step outside and get in line with all those other people and it was like irritating me because and it's not like I feel like I'm better than people, like, oh, I'm too good for them. I'm too good to be in general population with the rest of the people. Not like that, but, like, they were just being fucking annoying. And, like, like the line was taking so long, people couldn't get it together. This young lady in front of me, she kept coughing, which she was wearing a t-shirt, no jacket, no coat, no sweater, nothing on her arms. And it's like, well, no wonder you're sick or coughing. People like don't take care of themselves. She was like, <laughs> like all like, it was a nasty cough too. And she kept coughing into her hand, like not even a sleeve cause she had no sleeves, but she was coughing just into her hand. And that really, I'm not even a hypochondriac, but I don't know why that really disgusted me. Oh my God. Ugh, like she just kept coughing all, like it's one thing if you like have a cute cough, you're just like, <laughs> no, like it's it's like when strangers are just coughing in public all out in the open and, like, <laughs> and you're just like, bro, could you tone that down a little? That's a bit fucking much. You know, oh my God, I don't know why. I don't want to take this route. You know, like sometimes you can't trust GPS. It'd be putting you on a weird route that you didn't want to take. Why is there a church of Scientology in every neighborhood? Oh yeah, so I was just the finding those people really irritating. First of all, I don't like being out just with the ATM and then on the street. There was, there was like, skaters going by there was loud traffic people there was a guy with a, a lady with a fruit cart with a fruit stand like it was just a bit much there was a like homeless guy on the 
on the bus stop bench like smoking kush like it was so strong I was getting I love weed so I actually found the smell kind of pleasant like I'm not even gonna lie like I kind of liked the smell but even for me it was a bit much I was like bro oh my god you know like it was a lot going on I didn't mind the weed smell but it was really strong and it was you know wafting through the air and kind of drifting I was getting that draft I was getting that secondhand cross breeze you know the cross fade like it it was going upwind. I don't know how to explain. It was it was definitely catching in the wind. It was blowing my way. So <laughs> And then there was these like loud Hispanic guys standing in line behind me. They were like really enjoying their conversation and like some people love to hear themselves speak. Like and don't get me wrong, I'm definitely not racist by any means, but I don't know why if it's because I have a headache or a hangover. I don't know why these people in this particular moment was triggering me. Like, I'm again, I'm not racist against Latino people, but it was just, his voice was obnoxiously loud and annoying and it was just grating on my nerves. Like, just, you know that, I don't wanna call it the beaner accent because that sounds kinda ooh, risque. I don't know what the right word is to use, but it's that very, ah, chingada way. You know, it's that very like, he kept, I don't even know what he was saying because my Spanish skills are not that good anymore, but he kept saying like, I don't know, I don't, I, I can't speak Spanish good, so I can't tell you what they were talking about. You know, like I couldn't tell you even if I wanted to what these people were conversing about, but it was definitely, it was definitely like super annoying and I wasn't into it at all like I wasn't feeling it at all and then you're all exposed on the street I don't know something about having cash in my hand trying to make these deposits and the machine is reading the money it's going so slow and then something about that on the street like literally on a busy street was kind of like made me feel a little unsafe like but like I said, I wasn't able to deposit all the money in that closed ATM in the little glass part. I had to step out and deposit the second half of my deposit. Like basically I had to deposit the rest of the cash in the outdoor ATM part. And it was literally on the street. It was on a very chaotic street and it just made me uncomfortable. But I just tried to get it over with as fast as possible. And I could feel, you know how sometimes you can just feel people staring at you? And you know how when you're at the ATM, you can see in that little mirrored um, thing that they have, you can basically see, you can, you know, so you can be aware of your surroundings. Well, that was kind of what happened. I love this like magic hour, golden hour sunset. It's freaking beautiful. Ooh, I'm like dehydrated. I usually pack water when I'm on the road running errands. I forgot to bring a water bottle and so I feel like I barely, I mean, I had a little, I, I drank water when I got up cause that's the first thing I do every day when I get up is drink water Um, or masturbate, you know do what you need to do, I guess. Uh, see, I can't like merge. Oh God, okay. LA, LA traffic is so scary. I mean, yesterday when I was driving around at night, I just remember so many people running, like, like not just one or once or twice, but literally, I can't make this up. So many people running red lights. Like so many people um, would race to get past me without signaling. They wouldn't even put their blinker on, but they would speed up and then swerve around me and then cut in and out of lanes and do, you know when they cut in and out of lanes, you know what I'm saying? Like they'll go to the left to go to the right, to go to the middle, to again go to the right, to like, jump in front of people in traffic like for no good reason like no sense of order or structure to it just just that that movement that was so scary um I saw that a lot yesterday 
so many times people were about to hit me. Another thing that's fucking annoying is there's these kids that are always doing graffiti in the alley where I live. They're always having like loud parties in the neighborhood right around where I live, which when you live alone and it's like the weekend or even a weeknight and you hear loud friend groups having like loud partying and social gatherings, it can be kind of depressing, like as if I wasn't already so alone. Like nothing makes you feel more alone, you know what I mean? So there's been, you know, a lot of that going on. And then today, for example, when I was trying to leave in the driveway, they like, I have a compact car, so it's pretty small, but still they were all standing around gathering like these juvenile, you know, with like their baggy pants and whatever. And they were all just standing there wearing beanies or whatever they do, like having these parking lot parties in the alley where I live. I, I, I have no idea what those teenagers are doing, but I sound like an old lady. But when they saw me trying to back my vehicle out so I could just get out the driveway, they made no, like, no sense of urgency. Like, they made no effort to move out my way. And I had to keep looking in my rear view and looking behind me to make sure I didn't, you know, like, back into them. Because, you like, you know what I mean? Like, they wouldn't even move an inch. These kids wouldn't fucking move. They were just standing around in that like circle, half circle, and they wouldn't move when they saw me trying to drive out, like back out my vehicle. And it's like, really, you can't take a few steps back or to the side to make a space. Like, they, I was almost gonna hit them. And I'm like, fuck. And I had to roll down my window and I had to say all loud and passive aggressively. I had to be like, uh, could you, m could you move your ass? Seriously. I mean, I'm not a rude person by any means. I'm a very patient person, but this is getting fucking ridiculous. And there were so many fucking kids. There's like 20 of them in a huge group so circle party. I'm like, what the, I, I guess they have nothing to do but hang out on the stoop and just kick it in the alley and they drink beers and, or stand around and smoke a blunt and pass the blunt. I don't care about that. You can smoke weed if you want. I love weed, I'm fine with that. I don't care what they're doing, if they're drinking beers or smoking weed, but it's annoying that they block the driveway. And it's like, it's becoming a regular thing. The same thing happened to me yesterday. I couldn't go out the one way because there was a vehicle blocking it. And then I couldn't really go out the other way because there was literally all these juveniles, you know, these kids, mostly boys, mostly uh, Latino males or whatever, but they were all just standing there. So I, I'm like frustrated because I have places to go. I have places to be. I'm obviously like a professional woman. So I don't know. And then today at the ATM, I don't know why that irritated me, but I could hear this these men standing in line a few feet behind me at the eight in line for the ATM at the Bank of America ATM. And they're all like, hey, I'll let you go away. I don't know what they were saying. I'm so sorry. I can't really do a good impression of it, but whatever the fuck it was, I wasn't interested. And they were talking so loud and it's like, do they have to be that loud? I, we're just standing in line at the bank. Why, why do you have to, I don't know. Like so, he was so fucking annoying. Just his voice was, again, I'm not racist or anything, but his, something about this man's voice was like trigger. It was grating on my nerves like nails on a chalkboard. And I'm like, guys, this is the beauty of living in Koreatown. You know, I, I never, <laughs> you know, I never knew, I never knew I was gonna be getting a Spanish lesson with my banking um, at my financial institution. So, who needs Rosetta Stone? <laughs> oh my God. Like their voices were annoying. Again, I'm not racist. Nothing about what I'm saying is racist, but their voices were fucking annoying as fuck. Jesus, God, Jesus Christ, please, can we pull it together? <laughs> What is all this? It's a bit much. Even for me, it's a bit much. It's a little extra. Oh, I can see the Hollywood sign. Guys, um, oh, see, you gotta really like, like make it a point to enjoy the sunset because it doesn't last. It really does. It, it's fading fast, right? And the, the, 
the, this moment with the golden sunlight and then the palm trees and then those purple mountains with a little bit of pink ombre sunset skies, pastel skies, it's very beautiful. Um, but it's hard to enjoy and take in the beauty with all of this, you know, raggedy ass, crazy motherfucking, I'm sorry, cra crazy ass, excuse my language, crazy fucking LA traffic. I had a stressful week, you guys. I've been busting my ass at the club day in and day out. My dad was in town. I had to see, you know, my, my father and de deal with all that and uh, and then just uh you know water the elevator being broken water outages i mean wa wa uh, the water hot water being turned off in the building all of the visits from you know to collect rent and then them pounding on your door and sticking notes on your door every day because the rent is past due all my payments are stacking up everything is backed up past due past due past due it has been just one of those I remember being so broke I had a negative balance in my bank account I remember being so broke I didn't have money to buy food for my cats and I was trying to figure out do I spend the, my last on cat food and I never want to get that broke again you know if you've ever been there you know what I'm saying it's a horrible feeling and oh my god I, I don't mean to talk about personal fine my personal finances on here but cuz it's kind of uncomfortable to talk about all that but I, I never I don't want to be broke all the time it's just getting depressing you wake up so depressed because you're just like am I gonna eat buy food for myself or buy food for my pets or pay these bills or have the phone internet you know shut off and you just that's why I hate being in that fucking club man it's so so many things so depressive and it's such a dark dark place but I have to do what I have to do because you know who's gonna pay this past due rent who's gonna pay these bills you know what I'm saying I live alone in my apartment without any roommates so when it's time to pay it all falls on me it's a lot you know speaking of a lot what is this stop and go traffic I'm like uh when I skit skit uh you know I can't really get the vibe going like it needs to be going when all this like jolty jerky motions like stop and go stop gas break gas repeat stop rinse repeat oh it's too much it's too much all right you guys I want to go because I just want to enjoy this little magic hour sunset hour drive uh, running some errands today oh I still need to go to the gas station I usually try to do that before dark, but it gets dark so freaking early. Right now it's 5.30. It's not even like a little after 5 o'clock and it's getting so dark. I should have gone to the gas station first. Going, I, I'm trying to do these things before dark. Like going to the ATM and going to the gas station before dark makes me feel safer. It makes me more comfortable. But I, at least I deposited my cash in the daylight. But now the sun is quickly setting and nightfall is upon us. So realistically, I don't think I'm going to make it to the gas station before dark. I'm going to make it there after it's already kind of getting dark. But it's okay because like I said, it's 530. Hopefully I can make it to the gas station by 6 o'clock. There's so much traffic on the freeway uh, headed to Hollywood right now. I just need to go to the gas station before it gets too late because the later and later it gets, it just gets more and more creepy. So if I get there a little after sunset, that's okay. But like, like six o'clock is the new eight o'clock. Do you know what I'm saying? Like it's important to wake up early and get my day started and get out on the road early if I have errands to run because it gets dark so early that w I'm usually running errands in the evening around 7 p.m. But now I'm going to have to I'm going to have to make it a point to get errands done before 6 p.m. because that's when it gets dark. So the sooner you start, the sooner it's finished and you can you know, get home before dark. Or you can get those type of things done, the gas station, the bank. You know, you wanna do that before dark, just to play it safe. Ladies, stripper safety tip 101, I recommend having, at the very least, every woman should carry pepper spray everywhere you go, day or night, city, rural, regardless, uh, bus, Uber, 
or even if you have your own car, regardless, you should keep one in your purse, one in your car, one in your handbag, whatever, one in your house, you know, you should keep one on your keychain at all times. That's like just the bare minimum regardless and then on top of that if you're a dancer and you have a home club that you work at like several nights a week and you're a regular there and you're like getting your name out there putting yourself out there getting regular clients and you know you work there you're on the lineup you're on the roll call you're on the website Instagram you're on the clubs Instagram page you need to be like mindful of your safety I'm not saying you have to live in fear and be paranoid but you might want to invest in a stun gun or a taser and just keep it on you and keep, I mean, you know, keep it in your vehicle, like in the glove box or something, uh, glove compartment, because, and if not, I would at least carry pepper spray because, and like a flashlight, you know what I'm saying? Cause even though the doorman is supposed to walk you out, you just want to be mindful of your surroundings and you know, you always, always check behind you and to the sides of you before you back out your car before you leave that that building leave the parking lot and leave the, the area in general because I have been followed home before not all the way home but very close to it I have been followed leaving the club after hours so very scary and maybe we could do a separate story time on that but it's real you guys it's really not something your safety is number one your safety is not something to play around with because if you get hurt robbed assaulted uh, you know attacked whatever if you get vi viciously attacked um, or even if you get sick injured fall ill like how are you gonna be able to work so your body your safety all of that is so important because literally how are you gonna dance how are you gonna work perform and literally maintain a job if something um, catastrophic happens to you so yeah, like I'm stepping up safety measures because it's nothing to play with. It should be taken seriously. What is this traffic? Like, it's not a good look. Oh, I'm gonna be nice today. I'm gonna be, your humble queen is humble. I'm gonna be a nice, gracious lady. I'm gonna let this lady merge because I'm feeling like a really nice person. I'm feeling very um, benevolent and. Being a stripper, a lot of people think it's all about, a lot of people really think it's all about body and looks. And yeah, you are being judged on your looks and you are being picked and compared against other women based on your looks. But I will say when people ask for advice or like, how do you make money or how do you like get your name out there and like start making money and just get, you know, get, be successful at it. I think kindness and being a genuinely nice person is underrated because I believe and this is my opinion but I believe that being nice in the club can take you far you know what I'm saying I believe being nice like genuinely nice not fake not not like oh my god hi <laughs> like that fake laughter I mean being not being chill like being genuinely nice you know when it's genuine you'll know and you'll know deep down inside being real being nice being respectful like complimenting people and be acknowledging seeing people as human seeing them as an individual that's like little things guys like remember your co-workers names remember other dancer names definitely management and staff remember their names um even customers try to learn their names try to acknowledge them oh hey i remember you oh it's good to see you welcome back stuff like that being a stripper is a lot about congeniality like you will definitely get far you will get make more money you will get customers you might even build relationships with, with blah, 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 blah. build relationships with regulars if you have congeniality what does that mean I don't mean you have to be a cold-hearted bitch to these guys all, all the time every single night and I also don't mean you have to overcompensate and be like overly fake to the point where it's a caricature you know and you're just like um yeah so like do you want to dance or yeah okay yeah like hey baby do you want to dance oh my god like you don't have to be over the top fake because guys don't like that it can really be off-putting like people tell you you're trying too hard like fall back sis but 
you know, it can, it can be a bit much, like to like bring it down, bring it down, it's way too much. So you don't have to be overly intense mean or opposite, like overly intensely nice. You don't wanna to be too intense with anything. You can be Miss Congeniality. Like, it's about being a good host. You have visitors coming from out of town and coming from all over the world to visit the strip club. And so it's about making them feel comfortable. It is like congeniality and hospitality. I don't mean you have to be so nice that it's a weakness, that people walk all over you, take advantage of you, and harm you. But I mean being nice, like being warm, being open, being open to connection. Being, it's about being a good host. You have to look at it like you're the host because you know this is your home club or this is like the club that you're working at for the time being. And these customers are kind of like your guests. So think of it, I like to think of it like I'm hosting a fun and kinky sexy party almost. And you wanna like, and then it doesn't have to be so forced or be such an act. Over time, as you get more settled and comfortable in your club, and you get more established and you start building relationships there with management or customers or other females, whatever that you work with or whatever the case may be, you will naturally, it will just become more natural and it takes time. But when you put the work in, the hours and the effort and the time, over time you will start to, to get more comfortable and you will be able to be welcoming and warm. When you see new clients uh, walk through the door and they take a seat and you're sitting in their section or whatever, you can strike up a conversation. You might introduce yourself. You might ask them for their name or you don't really have to ask people for their name because they might want anonymity. So you don't even have to ask their name, but you can tell them your name, your stage name, your dancer name, and you can, maybe you could ask them what brings them here tonight, you know, like, how are you feeling tonight? You know, are you down to get, will you be getting dances tonight or have you got any dances yet like that's that's a subtle way of doing it instead of like hey babe do you want to dance or what like you don't have to do that because that turns people off i find that i can sneak it into the conversation in a more subtle instead of saying hey do you want to dance because people get sick of hearing that uh repeat like the repetition you can say something slightly different just to switch it up a little bit. You can start saying, hey, do you want to dance? Or, hey, let's do a dance right now. Like, that's that's a little bit intense. It can be read as aggressive, even if you're not trying to be. Instead of saying, hey, do you want to dance? I might say, so, do you get dances here? Who's your favorite girl to get, you know, do you have a favorite girl that you get dances with? You know, um, I would like to... I would like to be that girl. You know, I, I could be your girl. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I feel like I wanna I wanna show you what I can do. Um, or, you know, did you think about if you wanna get any dances tonight? Or you're just trying to feel out where they stand on dances. Is, is this even something they'd be open to? And if the vibe is absolutely not, they're clearly not interested and you can tell by their vibe and their body language. You can, you might say, you might choose this time to leave their section. Okay, well, Thank you, and you know, maybe I'll, I'll check back in later and we'll see where you're at because you never know. They might look stiff and awkward now, but they could relax and settle in and loosen up and they could come around and change their mind later if they plan on staying here all night, if they plan on hanging out for a couple hours. You could even ask them that. Hey, were you gonna stay here? You plan on being here for a little while? Um, maybe I can come back later and you know, we can see what's can see what's down what's going down like you know can see what's up you know because maybe they're not feeling it now but they might change their mind later when they had a few drinks if your club has alcohol or if they had enough time to settle in relax and get the feel uh, learn how it works and get comfortable and maybe they need to get money out you, you can even ask them you can you can without harassing or being too aggressive you can ask them oh did you need to get change did let me know if you need me to get the waitress to get change for you or you know, if you need to get cash out the ATM, whatever you need to do, so that you can have the best experience possible. Because the ladies, we're here for you. We're not working against you. We're here to show you a good time and give you um, a great experience. So yeah, just being friendly, being warm, and being a, genuinely a nice, kind-hearted person. I think just being a l listening ear, offering being available to listen to them. Maybe they have something on their mind. They have to get off their chest. And some people come in the club to get therapy, you know, services out of the dancers. Like, whatever the case may be, being nice is so underrated. And I think it has taken me far in this industry. 
what I lack in body or tits and ass, I'd like to think I make up for with a stellar personality. So don't forget to be nice, ladies. You know, being bitchy, meh, like being, being firm and being all bitchy, there's, I get it, there's a time and a place for it, but don't act like that all the time. Like, nobody wants to be around that, you know? It's okay to have fun, it's okay to relax, it's okay, it's okay to be nice and be a real, like, person. Something interesting that I noticed is that they're actually hiring more black girls at my club. I mean, in general, they're hiring more new girls at my club. I mean, they just, over the last couple weeks and months, um, they just hired a huge wave of new girls. I mean, there's a lot of them. But there's still a lot of, I don't wanna call them old girls. Yeah, there's still a lot of, I mean, there's both. Um, people that are currently that have been working there for a long time and a bunch of new people they just hired but I don't have a problem with that everyone was a new girl at their club at some club at some point in time you know but it's kind of nice that they hired a bunch of black girls I mean not a bunch but I mean definitely more than we had before like okay last night there were 12 uh, there were 12 total and I just looked at the list and it's astonishing to me that five out of 12 of us are like either black girls or mixed you know light skinned black girls or mixed girls or black girls like five out of 12 is almost half usually like I'm the only one or there's like maybe two there's maybe two out of 20 black or light-skinned black girls or And I will say maybe it's just the location. I don't even work at the nicest club ever It's not even upscale or anything. It's like average, but We're in a nicer area like we're not in the ghetto in the hood and we're not in a totally industrial area so I will say there's not many of us, but the few black girls or mixed, like kind of black ethnic or exotic girls at my club, there's only a handful of us. And sometimes I'm literally the only one on shift. But I will say all of the black girls that are, we have at our club, they're all like more classy. Like, yeah, some of them have like colored hair or they have, and, and most of the black girls are, are skinny to athletic build. And they have like, they have, um, yeah, they might have wigs or extensions. They might have long hair, that's fine. But they honestly, they don't even have their bodies done. Like most of us, I noticed, are tend to be skinny. Sometimes they're thick, but usually we're kind of athletic, fit, or petite, or pretty skinny. Um, really pretty faces and their behavior and even the way they dress and their outfits and the way they carry themselves is more classy and um, yeah really pretty girls really classy no one is like real ghetto or ratchet you know what I'm saying all of the ladies and the black ladies I don't know how else to, I don't know how else to say I don't know what words to use I'm just literally I'm trying to tell you guys how it really is the black girls or like the mixed girls at my club are all pretty petite and they're really um, you know pretty faces and it's nothing like the urban clubs which not that there's anything wrong with that but um, why is this person driving recklessly? Some people are so impatient, you know? I'm on my way to the gas station. Um, I just went to um, the dancewear stores in Hollywood and I bought a new outfit um, and a new pair of shoes. Um, dancer shoes because my favorite shoes broke I tried to super glue them 
the bottom back together and it almost worked but then unfortunately it made a huge mess and super glue exploded everywhere and it got all up and down the sides of the shoes and it became an even bigger mess and it was sticking in my hands and fingers my fingers were glued together and it was a mess so I was like scrubbing my hands to wash it off and that was like a nightmare but so that didn't work out I ended up just tossing them you know we had a good run I got a lot of usage out of those shoes but the the super glue I didn't think it could be saved it's once you get super glue everywhere it's really hard to like uh, remove it or get it off you have to like, scrub it off or scrape it off and even then it's like not really so I had to throw that pair away so today I decided to buy some new shoes because when you don't really feel like going into work sometimes your motivation's not really there or you know it's so depressing just all of the negative experiences you have there so sometimes I like to perk myself up by buying a new outfit or some new shoes I really I'm on a I'm supposed to be anyways on a budget and I really couldn't afford it to be honest and I hate spending money on stuff like that um, but maybe this will make me feel a little more excited about going into work and dancing on stage I don't even know what to say to that stupidity and ignorance so I've been driving around for hours I've been driving you know what I mean I've been out of the house for hours there's never any public restroom available and I see that this CVS actually has a restroom open finally like most drugstores never have a public uh, restroom open so I looked around the corner and I could see there's actually a restroom and I was like it looks like it's um, open and I pulled the handle and then I heard some girl yell oh no I'm in here oh my god like she freaked out and I was like oh sorry you know and then I walked away and continued shopping then I walked back of two minutes later and there's this dude standing there and I guess that's his girlfriend or his little friend or whatever he was kind of standing I don't know if he was waiting for the restroom or he was waiting for his friend to get out of the restroom I don't know but he was standing there alone and then I noticed he was also standing there with this other girl and they were standing a few feet apart facing each other and I don't know I I had to pee so bad that like you know you know how I get when I have to go to the bathroom really bad like I can't even think straight I like desperately have to go urgently so I was like getting urgent and I looked and out of respect for him I said oh are you in line and I kind of I crossed through them in the middle so I could get in line for the restroom um, I like crossed in between in the space between them and I wasn't really thinking because I just urgently had to go to the bathroom and then I kind of like had a heavy hand basket full of items it had I had a bottle of water that's heavy so I like put it down on set it down on the ground and he got mad at me he, he was he had the nerve to get mad at me he was like excuse me and I'm like huh he's like is what you say excuse me is what you say and he's all like and then he had this dumb like I don't know what was wrong with him he was like I really don't know what his problem was he was like you don't just walk in the middle of someone's conversation and I'm like I maybe that was an awkward maneuver but I honestly didn't mean anything bad by it at all like I had to go to the restroom so bad and I was trying to explain that to him I was like look bro I was just like I've been driving and I'm trying not to pee on myself please like and he's like, oh, well, I don't have respect for you. He started going on about something that made no, absolutely no sense to me. He was like, uh, I have respect for people who have respect for me, so I don't respect you. Or some something crazy like that. And I was like, and then he was going on about my face. And he's like, uh, I don't like your face. Or you have, you have like something about your face and I'm like what do you not like about my face like am I ugly or something like so now you're insulting my, the way I look like I can't help it that I look like this you know I was born like this I can't help it if that's my facial features and I'm like how rude all that because I'm trying to stand in front of the 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 bathroom and like wait for the bathroom to be open you know, and I explained that to him. I'm like, sorry. And I was about to say sorry, but then I'm like, no, I'm not going to apologize to him because I was like, I, at first I was genuinely confused that he was mad at me. I was like, are you for real? I was like, really? Like you're mad because I walked from here to here 
like I walked two feet away. I guess he was mad because he felt like I walked in between them when they were facing each other having a conversation. I walked between him and his little friend or his girlfriend or whatever. But I didn't mean anything rude by it. I genuinely was trying to get to the restroom as quickly as possible. I had my sights set on the restroom, but I don't have time to explain all that. Like nothing I did was that bad or that so-called rude. In fact, I'm not a rude person. I had respect because when I approached him the first time, I said, oh, are you in line, like for the bathroom? So I am a respectful person. I don't, I don't know what, the, what it is about Koreatown. I don't know, like living in LA is like uh, people with their attitudes. And he had, he, he had this like, like, open your mouth when you're speaking to me. He was all like, no, uh, 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 because, you know, I respect people who respect me. I don't know if it's the, the language barrier, if it's the Korean accent. Again, I'm not racist, but he was like, it's like, can you open your mouth to speak? You, you got to come. I'm sorry, but you got to come at me with something better than that. If you're going to come talking to me crazy, not like, oh, I respect people who respect me. So I don't respect you. And then he, I thought it was kind of me and that he kept saying, I, I don't like I don't like your face. I don't like what you're doing with your face. And I'm like, well, am, am I ugly or something? Why are you treating me like this? That, that I thought that was kind of mean. I was like, are you for real? Like, there's no way you got mad because I walked to stand in front of the restroom. You understand when women, like when a lady has to go to the bathroom, when she has to go, she has to go. And anybody should be intelligent with the, with a bare minimum amount of intelligence would understand that. Nothing I did was malicious or mean. Yeah, maybe it was an awkward maneuver at most, but, and then the girl he was with didn't say anything. She just was looking at him and looking at me and looking at him and looking at me and she didn't say anything in that argument and it was such a dumb argument to have because the thing is I don't like people micromanaging me like who are you to tell me I can't walk from point A to point B to get like in line for the restroom he felt disrespected that I cut across the, the empty space between him and the person he was talking to like him and his friend but honestly, yeah, I could have gone around them. I could have said, excuse me. But when I have to go to the bathroom really bad, I'm literally just trying to go to the bathroom. I don't have time for all that. And I'm not into people telling me where I can and can't stand, where I'm allowed to walk, because we're in CVS, so this is public you know, property, and you don't tell me where I'm allowed to stay. Like, I'm not territorial over any space in the store because it's open to the public. You know, I don't own this store and I don't even work at the store. I'm trying to get to the bathroom urgently because I have to pee so bad. You know how you get when you've been driving and when you've been out for hours out of the house and there's nothing open, there's no restrooms open. So I thought it was really, I was like incredulous that, you know, that's a great vocab word. You know, I was like incredulous that someone would be mean to me and would be starting a fight. Some people are like looking for a fight. Some people are like looking for a fight. I mean, granted, maybe what I did was r considered rude to some, but it wasn't that deep. I wasn't like trying to go out of my way to disrespect this man. I was literally trying, to, my vision was looking at the restroom, so I walked straight across. I didn't feel like tiptoeing around. I'm not gonna walk around eggshells to please you, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I could have gone around them, but honestly, like I passed through them through the middle because what, I have to pee really bad. I'm just trying to get to where I need to go. Most people wouldn't have reacted like, I just didn't like his cocky attitude. Like, like you're not gonna scold me. What are you, my fucking parent? You know, he's like, excuse me is what you say. I, I'm an adult. So now you're trying to parent me and you're trying to, I, see, I'm not into that at all. I like to let people live, you know what I'm saying? It was a misunderstanding at most and trying to imply that I'm a, a disrespectful person. I'm actually not. I had respect because when I walked over to them and I saw them there standing there waiting before me, I said, oh, are you in line? Like as in for the bathroom stall or whatever. In CVS, unbelievable. I'm not into people policing how I speak, act, dress, how I walk and talk and how I choose to stand and position my body. I'm not into telling people what to do or where to stand. and how they should move their body through through the aisles of the store like at that point you're micromanaging me and i'm like 
Uh uh-uh. uh, I'm not into being micromanaged, and I'm a I'm an adult. You're not my fucking parent. Don't don't like, you know, that to correct like my behavioral like cor- to correct with that corrective attitude. You know who you're not some authority. You're a dude in CVS with your girl or your friend group, and you're targeting me, and I'm I'm a female in here alone, and I think that is kind of that's a little bit harsh because. You're not some authority. It would be one thing if you were security here and you told me, oh, you can you step to the side or can you well, whatever, the, this, that, and the third. But you don't work here. You're not a... He's literally just a customer just like me. And you're trying to tell me that I'm basically taking up space, like that I have no right to be... I have no rights to be here or I'm in the way. And that that's... I think that's not cool because you're not in a power structure... You know what I'm saying? You're not in a power struggle above me. I don't like when people try to act like, oh, they, they're in the space. So, I, you know, it's their space because no one owns the space when you're in a public space. You know what I'm saying? And I tried to explain as calmly as I can, but my voice is like shaking, but I'm trying to stay calm. And I was like, you know, I didn't mean it like that. I was just trying to go to the restroom. Like I, I, you can tell I urgently have to go. That's all of this is. It's not even that deep. Some people, I swear, they like, they want to start a fight. They're like looking for a fight. And I, I so wasn't, and I even told him, I was like, well, you're not really being a gentleman. I I said that. I literally said, you're not being a gentleman because most people would be like ladies first, or most people would like hold the door open for you, or most people would at least just mind their business. But he had the nerve to comment with that nasty attitude like like I'm the problem like I did something and I really did nothing wrong I I can't I can't explain why that situation made me so mad he I thought it was so mean the way he was going on and on about how oh I your face I don't like he was like I don't he was all like what did he say I don't remember exact the exact words but he, he started to get into something about Oh, see, I don't, I don't like what you're doing with your face. I don't like what you're doing with your face. You know, you, 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 you like, like, like as if he's trying to like escalate a fight or something. Like I wasn't giving anybody mean looks with my face. I had, when I have to pee really bad, I can't even think straight. I can't even focus. You know how it is. So that was just all too much. Maybe that's what he does, you know? Maybe he, like, gets off on verbally abusing women. Maybe that's how he treats his girlfriend or something. I don't know, but I had to get the fuck up out of that store. And then, I don't know, and then there was, like, an altercation or a screaming, something going on in the front of the store. So I ended up beelining. I had to, whoop, take a U-turn and go to the self-checkout machines in the back of the rear of the store (laughs) because I just didn't feel safe going up front with all that chaos and commotion by the door. So, oh my God, like, this is why I can't go out of public. This is why I can't leave the house. It's always something like, I don't know why people have a problem with me. I literally wish, you see me a single female alone. I'm shopping, minding my business. And I wasn't looking for all that extra attention or negativity. I was literally trying to go to the bathroom. And I thought I was a respectful person because I said, are you in line, you know, for the, for the, to use the restroom. So mm -mm, don't, don't come telling me what to do like you fucking know me because I don't know you like that and honestly I didn't do anything to you so you have no right to be mean to me talking about you don't like my face I mean who says that to somebody you know either you're looking to provoke someone or start a fight you're looking to get into it with someone or you're being mean making nasty comments about my face and my appearance and I'm like what am I am I ugly or something what, what's wrong with my face I, I I'm that's hurtful you know what I'm saying because I wasn't giving anybody evil eyes or dirty looks. I was legitimately trying to set my basket down and it was heavy and set it down and stand and get into the restroom. But it was occupied, so I was patiently waiting. You know what I'm saying? It was like all of that because I was trying to use the restroom. I thought that was just so... That guy had this, like, I don't know, like, attitude or something, like, yeah, bro, okay. Okay. I don't know if it's like a a cultural something. I don't understand the rules of their culture, but I'm, as far as I'm concerned, you're a stranger. I don't know you and don't tell me what to do. You can't tell me where to walk and stand and tell me what to do. Cause to me, 
that's really not cool like now you're acting like I have no rights and you have rights to be here and I have no right to be here and we're in a fucking pharmacy you know who are you who are you like you have no authority here that just really made me so mad I had to like breathe. I think what I was trying to say is I just felt once again I feel so misunderstood, especially by a stranger, like some person I don't know in public in a store, for example. I hate confrontation and I hate arguments and fights, especially over something so petty and uh, stupid and uh, so ignorant. Sorry, my seatbelt. <laughs> Oh wow, look at this like rowing class right here. Oh yeah, this is the Orange Theory Fitness. That's cool. Um, I guess, what am I trying to say? The best way I can put it, I didn't appreciate, like I, I really wasn't feeling his, uh, I, I really didn't like his threatening energy. Like I didn't like, I don't like when people come at me with that threatening energy when it was something so petty and simple as standing in line or, or not a line or a non-existent line that's not even really there. You know, stuff like that really bothers me. I don't like that, um, that, that hyper male aggressive, super male aggressive energy, hyper aggressive male energy, um, like that really threatening tone, really, um, aggressive, uh, de being really degrading and derogatory for no reason. Um, you know what I'm saying? He was like, well, I don't like what you're doing with your face or I don't like something about your face, which that's really mean. You don't say that to people like, and honestly, like we're both adults here. You're some, you're just some guy or some random guy. So it's like, you don't tell me what to do with my eyes or what to do with my face. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I just got the feeling that this wasn't about me. I think some people are, they're on their own plane and they're doing their own thing. Like some people, it's sad really that he's carrying around that toxic negative energy way, almost like waiting to lash out at somebody because like really bro, I wasn't even trying to go there with you. It was not that, it was not that serious. Come on. So he, I mean, I chose to laugh it off like it was a stupid, silly misunderstanding, but he looked very threatening. He really was looking and speaking to me the things he was saying and the tone, that weird, creepy tone he was saying it in, like kind of hostile, like aggressive. He was saying this to me like, like he was really looking to fight. And I'm, I'm not going to escalate it to that point because... I was simply trying to walk from point A to point B so I can, you know, get access to the restroom because I had to pee really, really bad. Anybody would understand that. It's not worth a fighting over, clearly. Something about living in Los Angeles, like living in these cities, I, it's so many negative experiences just to do the simplest task, like go shopping in a store. Somebody wants to tear you down and insult you and fight you and get act all weirdly threatening and territorial. Like, they own this place, and I don't understand. I don't understand why all that is really necessary, because I like to be real calm when I'm in public. But maybe not too calm and laid back. Like, I also like to get stuff done. You know, I move efficiency. I move with the, with the in efficiency. I move with a sense of urgency when I'm, I need to go to the bathroom, for example, do get my shopping done, check something off my list. Like, I like to get stuff done, but... I'm generally kind of calm and I'm a loner because I'm alone in the store and so there's something really nasty about that to me like there's something kind of nasty and um, you know what I'm saying there's something really off-putting like it's not cool right like there's something really awful about someone who's with their friend or with their boyfriend or girlfriend or with their group of friends like two three people or more and they're coming at you when you're alone and helpless right like you don't do that that's kind of mean maybe he felt confident because he he came in here with a group of friends so he had his people around him but you can see that I'm visibly alone in here doing my shopping with my little hand basket so it's just a little I think it's a little mean 
to be targeting or harassing, whatever you want to call it, trying to fight me and all this, get into some type of verbal altercation with me. When I'm alone and you're here with people, do you know what I'm saying? I'm not into that. That's like, I think that's kind of messed up. So sometimes you have to deal with uh, really shitty people out in the world. I, it, it's just the reality of life, I guess, but damn, come on, bro. You got to step to me with a better, better argument than that because you're not going to win an argument with me. Trust me. 